Hey everybody, it's Paula here from the XR Club and welcome to today's video. In today's video, we're going to look at some dynamic conditional formatting. Dynamic conditional formatting will make any spreadsheet template look way more professional as the formatting moves along with your data. But before we get stuck into this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel. And don't forget to hit that notifications button so you don't miss any more of my videos. Also below this video, you're going to find a link to a learn and earn activity. That's right, the XR Club is a tokenized website and we have been experimenting with learn and earn activities. All you have to do is take part in the activity on the blog post, which is related to this video, and you can earn yourself some token rewards. So if you're ready, we will get stuck into some conditional formatting, dynamic conditional formatting. Now the template I am using is my invoice template. And within my invoice template, I have a statement sheet. Now this statement sheet can produce a statement which shows only what is outstanding or it can produce a transaction listing showing everything. Now you may have noticed when I changed and the additional data came, additional banded bars came, our total moved and the line above and below our total also changed. Now I achieved this using dynamic conditional formatting. Conditional formatting, when you put in a formula, you select the option in conditional formatting to apply formatting by a formula. The formula works off logical statements. It works off trues and falses. So if your test is found to be true, it's going to apply the conditional formatting. If it's found to be false, it won't apply the conditional formatting. So to achieve a more dynamic conditional formatting, you need to think creatively about your trues and your falses. Now, the easiest way to do it is to experiment with them outside in the cells in Excel instead of within the conditional form bar. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by highlighting every second row in the table as a banded bar. Now, I already have the formatting applied in here, but we will delete it in a second and we will reapply the formatting. But let's first get our trues and our falses. So we want a list of trues and a list of falses. So everything for this row is going to be false. So the, the formatting won't be applied. This is true, this is false, this is true, this is false and so forth. So the function that we can use for this is the mod function. Now the mod function takes two criteria, a number and a divisor. The number that we are going to take is going to be the row. In this case, it's row 10. Then it's looking for a divisor. Now we're always going to divide by two in this case. Now the mod function returns the remainder. So 10 divided by two is five. There is no remainder. So we would expect zero here. Now I'm gonna fill this down and we will see, and I'm gonna fill it down a little bit further than where we have data. So we can see here in this row, it takes 11, it divides it by two, it gets five, and there's a remainder of one and it calculates all these ones and zeros. We can now update this formula. So if we go back in and we update this formula to say equals one, we will now get a list of trues and a list of falses. Now, the only thing is if we were to use this formula as our conditional formatting formula, when we have no data, we will continue to get handed bars because we continue to get trues and falses. And we want only trues and falses where there is data and then falses where there is not data. So we can use a second conditional formatting statement, a, a second logical function. And in this case, we are going to use not. Now not will turn a true into a false or a false into a true. And we're also going to use the logical function is blank. Now, what are we going to check and see if it is blank? We are going to go over and we are going to see if our invoice number is blank. And if this is blank, it would give us a 
true, but if it's not blank because we've not, it would give us a false. So we can see here, I forgot the extra, extra bracket, we get a true. Now, let me fill this down and we can see that we get true, true, true. So is this blank? No, it's not blank, but it gives us a true because we've put the not in front. And then down here, we have all these falses. Now, what we can do is we can use the AND function and we can put both of these into our AND function and we can fill this down and we will now have trues and falses, trues and falses where we have data and only falses where we don't have data. Now, what I'm going to do is I am going to, instead of putting in the cell references, I'm going to go in and replace the cell references with the actual formulas because that way, you will see now in a minute, we can copy this formula exactly in, I'm going to replace this P10, into our conditional formatting. So I'm going to fill that down and we see we have our false, true, false, true, false, false, false. So we have a formula and we can copy that formula. Now, first of all, to insert our conditional formatting, we can select our data and we can go to our home ribbon conditional formatting. Now we could add a new rule, but I already have some rules in here. So I'm going to go in and manage these rules. Now I have this formula already in here. So I am going to delete the rule. And you'll see now that I have deleted the rule, we have no formatting now here in our spreadsheet. So let's highlight the data and we will highlight way down. And I am going to go into my conditional formatting. I'm going to go to manage rules. I am going to go to new rule, use formula to determine which cell to format. I'm going to paste in my formula and now I am going to set my format. Now I'm going to set my format to fill in every second row and I wanted to fill in this light color here in every second row. And then I'm going to say, okay, okay. And I am going to apply it. Now we see our formatting has come back again. It has reappeared now that we've added it to our conditional formatting. And when we change our details, this updates along with the amount of rows or the number of rows that we have within our data set. So that is the first, that is our banded rows. Now you could play around with that and have it every third row, every fourth row, every fifth row and so forth. What we're going to look at now is these lines above where our total is. You see our total cell has a line above and a line below and this moves dependent on where the data is. So again, what we need is we need trues and we need falses. So what we're going to do is we are going to, first of all, we are going to use the is number function because the is number function will give us a true or a false if a value is number. So we're going to look at the outstanding column and see, is this value a number? And we will get a true. Then what we're going to do is we're also going to look and see is the cell below blank? So we're used putting in the cell right below and saying, is it blank? Now I'm going to copy these down. So you can see that we can see all of these are numbers where there's numbers. We then have a false where there is no numbers. Now don't forget the formatting only works where we have trues. So formatting won't work because we have falses here. But we also have some falses up here. We have it's false when we combine these, a true and a false is going to give a false. So all of these are falses. And the only one that we have that's true is the one that is a number and has a blank below it. So what we can do is combine these into an into one logical function, into an and statement. So we can say equals and, and I'm going to just paste in is number as our first function and then we know our second function is is blank and we're going to look at the cell right below and that is our logical test now we can fill that down and we see we get the same 
as when we looked at them individually because we would be combining them. So don't forget, two trues will give a true, a true and a false will give a false and two falses will always give a false. We can then copy this formula. We can select this column and we can take it a lot further down because of how much data we have. We can then go to our, hold on, I just scroll back up there, insert our home ribbon, sorry, conditional formatting, manage rules because I already have this rule in, new rule you would have. I am going to say edit rule because I already have this rule in. So I am going to say edit rule. You would select use formula to determine which cells to format. Paste in your formula, select your format will be your borders. You're going to select a top border and a bottom border and say, okay, okay, and apply. Now, as the positioning of that last value changes, dependent on the amount of rows that we have on our statement or on our transaction listing or whatever model it is that you are doing, these will change dynamically. Now, you can do this an alternative way. The table function, so if you convert your data into a table, a table format, control and T will convert into a table. This will automatically, dependent on the format style that you pick, band your rows for you. Now, why have I not done that here? Well, the reason I haven't done it here is because in this spreadsheet, I am using dynamic arrays and dynamic arrays don't work within tables. They work with table data, but you can't then put them into a table. So that is my video on dynamic conditional formatting. I do hope that you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and hop over to the website now. There's a link below the video and do take part in that learn and learn activity and start collecting those rewards today. Thank you very much and goodbye now.